<laughs> oh my god, I just saw the silhouette of the car on a canyon wall and it's the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Porsche never built the 993 generation 911 GT3 RS. The Gunther Works 400R, though, was created as the answer to a simple hypothetical question. What if they had? To find out, I stopped by Gunther Works parent company Vorsteiner's Southern California headquarters to learn more from the car's creators. So, tell me, what was the genesis behind this project? What made you decide to do this? Um, we thought that there was a missing linkage in the Porsche history where there wasn't a 993 GT3 RS that Porsche had never built. Right. It started in Gen 996. So that was sort of the whole vision and concept behind it is to build an air-cooled GT3 RS that Porsche had never built. Now this was a big step forward for you guys, right? Because obviously Vorsteiner, you do a lot of body parts, you do a lot of wheels and stuff like that, but building a whole car almost outright from you know the chassis back up, that's a big step. Yeah, it is a big challenge for us. And uh, you know, Vorsteiner has been manufacturing carbon fiber and wheels for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. And really, we had the capabilities in-house to build 80% of the car um, in our facility here in Orange County. Um, the only components that we had to outsource were some of the mechanical components like the gearbox, the engine, and so forth. And now you're not making many of these, right? It's a pretty limited run. Yes, it is a limited production run. We don't want to make too many. We want to keep it a little more exclusive. Uh, we are only making uh, 25 cars. Oh, wow. And at this point, they're pretty much spoken for already. Out of a gun. Yeah. Uh, how long does it take to make one completely, like from stem to stern, start to finish? It depends on the options that the customer configures, but uh, we're approximating between uh, seven to nine months, depending okay. on what options the customer has. A lot of it, I'm assuming, just done right here in this shop, right? Absolutely. All yeah. done here in house. Awesome. Yeah. Oh man, that's cool. And how much are these going for if you want to buy one? So the, the uh, starting price of what uh, the, the customer has to provide the original 993 donor card. Okay. Any 993 will do? 993 Carrera 2 specifically. Okay. Yeah, so that's what this body is based upon. And then from there, uh, the starting price uh, is 525000 okay. And it options out at somewhere around six hundred and seventy dollars to $680,000. The Gunther Works project is a bold undertaking for Vorsteiner, considering the company is best known for aftermarket wheels and body panels for sports cars and luxury rides. On paper, at least, it seems like it has all the right stuff. Gorgeous body, potent boxer engine, a taut suspension, and mighty wheels to help it cling to the pavement. But if the proof of the pudding is in the eating, the proof of the Porsche is in the driving. So to see how good the 400R really is, I grabbed the key from the gorgeous delivery box that comes in and took it out for a spin. wonder. You can just feel the immediacy with this thing. That way you can with the best naturally aspirated engines. The power really comes towards the top end here. Basically at about 4,000 RPM is where it comes alive. The only thing original on the car are the doors, the mirrors, and the handles. Wow. So everything else. Everything else. So we take a Carrera 2 mm. and we strip the whole car back and we then media blast the shell and then it comes back and then we reclothe it if you like in carbon fiber so every single panel on the car from the front fenders the front hood the front bumper even the roof the rear quarter extensions the rear wing and the rear bumper everything is carbon fiber it's only the doors that we use and so you guys did all of the work for making these carbon fiber panels at your headquarters here in southern california right yeah. Because we've been in the carbon fiber business for 15 years with Walsh China, we have all the manufacturing capabilities in-house. So we design, um, we, we make the molds, and then we manufacture all the product. But to get to that stage took a lot of work. Sure, yeah. Especially with a car like this. So what we ended up doing was once we had, like I said, we had that framework, we had clay modelers come in okay. that then clay modeled the car. And because this car is a very, very much a curved car and it has a lot of organic lines to it, and plus the fact that we wanted to keep the car looking as if it was something original factory look. Right. So doing those curves and getting those lines right was a very, very difficult job to do. And then we used, so we used this old school clay modeling technology, but we then also use the latest modern technology that we already use for Vorsteiner. So for instance, once we'd done that, we'd 3D scan the car. Okay. 
and then we made revisions to it. Then we do CFT testing where we check the aerodynamics of it. Cool. That needed some re revisions. So once we were happy with it, we went from there and we started milling some parts mm -hmm. out of uh, plastic. Then you use those as a template. You fit them onto the car. If there's any revisions to be made, they're made. From there, we go on to make the tooling and then we make our own carbon fiber parts. Every panel has been made from pre-pregged carbon fiber that's um, vacuum bagged and then is baked in an autoclave. But we wanted to make it look as if it wasn't carbon fiber. So this car's completely painted and right. we wanted to make sure you didn't see any of the carbon fiber underneath it. So what we've ended up with is the car is now 2,670 pounds and our engine develops 431 horsepower at 7,800 RPM. The steering though in this car is just really, it's incredible. You really have to just recalibrate your senses and what you're used to when you're driving a car, especially with an older car like this because it's so light and it just turns on a dime. Part of that comes from the car's light weight, but it's also due to the suspension work the Gunther Works team performed on this Porsche. The way the car looks is has come about more from a standpoint of form follows function. One of the things we did was, in order to make these cars handle, all the air-cooled cars had inherent understeer problems, and the reason they had that was because the front track is a lot narrower than the rear track. Right. So when we looked at what Porsche did for racing, when they went racing, they actually squared the front track off. And in order to make these cars handle properly, you need to have, be running them square. So if you unbolt the front suspension arms, they can be put in again, 30 millimeters apart each side. So that makes your track 60 millimeters wider, basically. So you're basically taking it from here, and yeah. you're putting them there. Okay. So with those two additional suspension mounting points, we increased the front track by 60 millimeters. Okay. And then what we've ended up with is um, a 63 inch square track. So we did our mock wheels, we did a very rough suspension geometry, we used those additional mounting points, and then we got that track to be 63 inches. And how we did that is we're running 245 tires in the front, but we're running 315s on the back. And the funny thing is when you increase your rear tire width, mm -hmm. you actually reduce your track. Right. So that's how we managed to get the track completely square. But the heart of this heavily modded 993 is its engine. For the 400R, the company turned to Roth Sport Racing to create a motor worthy of the car's mission. They whipped up a naturally aspirated 4-liter Boxer 6, packing as much power as the turbocharged 993 generation 911 GT2. So this is a 4-liter flat 6, naturally aspirated, hand-built Porsche engine. So this, we worked with our technology partner, which is Roth Sport Racing up in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So our remit was, um, Jeff, we want a 400 horsepower naturally aspirated engine. So what he's built for us is a four liter engine that, and the only original part of this engine from the original engine is the crankcase. Okay. So every single part on this engine is brand new. The uh, intake is from a company in the UK called Eventuri, and they have this painted intake, which generally effectively creates an Eventuri and creates power. Mm -hmm. So when we tested this on the dyno, it gave us about another six horsepower. But more importantly, what's happened is it's turned into a feature on the car, which is purely accidental. Because now when you open the hood, people go, wow. And right. the comments we get is it looks like a speaker. But it's all there purely to generate power. And it makes 431.1 horsepower at 7,800 RPM. And all that makes for one hell of a good time. Now, obviously, the one comparison everyone is going to ask about this car is how well does it compare to a Singer customized 911? Singer has been doing this much longer, and you know their cars have a slightly different mission brief a lot of times. They obviously have a lot of customization to it. You can have your car more track-oriented, or more road-oriented, or however you like it. Uh, the Singers, admittedly, are much more luxurious inside. They really go above and beyond in terms of the you know, fit and finish and the quality and stuff like that. But this car, obviously, it's a little more flat out performance minded. Again, it's trying to be a RS type model as opposed to something like a Singer, which is trying to be sort of the best of both worlds. But to that end, I think this car, it appeals to a different buyer. This car appeals to someone who really is more interested in buying this car just to cane the hell out of it and wants to make that slightly more outrageous statement. You could absolutely have both this and a Singer in your garage. I don't think you're gonna have many guys who are deciding between them. I think if you're interested in it, you're gonna buy both. I think they complement each other more than they compete with each other. I certainly want both of them in my garage. I just need $1.3 million in disposable cash.